the quarterly labor force survey has confirmed fears that youth unemployment in South Africa is worse off than pre-pandemic levels. At 63.3%, the country's youth unemployment is one of the highest in the world, in fact. Only 79,000 formal uh, sector jobs were created in the previous quarter, together with a reduction in permanent employment. Also, twice as many young women in particular than men were retrenched during that same period. Youth uh, Employment Accelerator Harambe says, it's time to find new ways for young people to enter and stay within the labor market. This is the focus of the organization's latest Breaking Barriers quarterly report. For more on this, let's bring in the CEO of Harambe, Mariana Iskander, who joins us now via our video link. Mariana, it's great to see you. Thank you very much for making time. So, you know, Harambe has been in this field for quite some time. Perhaps let me just begin with your reading of where we are and how we got here. I think I under the quarterly labor force survey is frankly a regular reminder that the challenge of youth unemployment remains a top national priority. And in this case, government needs the private sector and the private sector needs government. And so the question is, how do we move faster in solving for some of these uh, really critical issues as the latest report shows, particularly post the pandemic? There's often talk of making sure that there are uh, opportunities. Is there an equal amount of talk of making sure that those are accessible opportunities? Exactly right, Ayanda. There are, I think, two parts of this problem. We absolutely need to create more income opportunities for young people, and I hope we'll get a chance to chat about that specifically. Right. The formal economy has to grow faster. We have to find opportunities in communities. We have to get creative on how to find things that young people can do to earn money and grow their skills. But if we don't solve for how young people can find those opportunities in a more inclusive and accessible way, we're also not going to win. We have a belief that if young people can, in a way that's free for them, access as many opportunities and see what's on offer as possible, we will have made a significant dent in the challenge. We, along with many other partners, both in the private sector and in government, are working on an aggregated platform called SA Youth, where young people can come and ideally see what's on offer near them from many, many different partners. It's sayouth.mobi. It's a zero-rated Mobi site free for data use, and it's accompanied by a toll-free line 0800-SA-SA-SA, which is 0800 727272, where young people who might struggle or not have connectivity can call in and talk to a human for support. So at least as opportunities get created, we are ensuring that young people, and especially those that struggle the most with access to finances, access to networks, can go to a single place and be supported and at least know um, what's available. There's been so much commentary, for lack of a better term, around whether or not even things like degrees become useful in the context of the crisis we're facing. Many people actually, the term coined is a skills mismatch. It appears that young people are getting the kind of skills that the labor market doesn't need. Is that an accurate reading, do you think, about where we are and, and why we're here for so long? Absolutely. We have many examples of qualifications that don't respond to what the labor market needs. If I just take the digital sector as an example, everybody talks about needing to give young people more specific digital skills. As Harambi and, and with many partners, we conducted a very specific survey that said which actual qualifications in the digital space have available jobs. So, for example, if one can find a way to become a Amazon certified web developer, there are many, many jobs. But if we're just going to keep giving generic digital skills that don't speak to the opportunities that are available, we're also investing in skills and qualifications that aren't in the end going to result in a young person earning more income. Let's speak more about those available opportunities. I imagine, of course, for the many young people who feel like they've entered the wrong path, it's now about redirecting. So for young people, I would say a few things. I think that in the world everywhere, before the pandemic, but certainly accelerated by the pandemic, the kind of um, vision of getting a permanent job that you're going to have for the next 15 or 20 years no longer exists for anybody. So that's not even just for young South Africans, but certainly the case here. We have to find ways to keep stacking up opportunities that may be more short term, they may be in your community, they may be a way of signaling to the labor market that you are gaining skills. The formal economy, which the Stats SA um, report confirms, is where most employment happens. 
And growing the formal economy has to remain plan A, B, C, D, all of the above, and we can unpack that. Having said that, the formal economy isn't going to grow fast enough to give every young person who's looking for an opportunity a chance to do that. So we are heartened by things like the presidential employment stimulus, which at least gives young people a chance to do things in their community. For example, the Department of Basic Education brought on close to 300,000 young people to assist in local schools with COVID protocols, support teachers, a way to earn income, get some skills, and be able to, again, stack up opportunities on um, one's journey to, to increasing their employability. Yeah. There's an interesting development happening on the peripheries. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but uh, the long story short is a bill is being considered within the trade and industry department that would effectively, if passed and every other thing is followed, it would essentially compel companies to disclose the earnings of top-end officials within the company, and that is done within the spirit of transparency, the spirit of ensuring that there's increased equality in our society, and also with the hopes that it will spur on different companies into absorbing young people into their businesses. Um, and, you know, at least in that way, helping balance the books, for lack of a better term. It's a lot of paraphrasing. Essentially, that's my very roundabout way of asking, do you think something like that would work? I'm not familiar with the details of that uh, bill. It'd be interesting to understand the direct link from um, displaying salaries to hiring more young people, but I definitely think that in the societal push for equality, the wage differentials within corporate South Africa have to be addressed and have to be taken on at some level. Yeah. Uh, let, let's speak about... Um the barriers to entry, which I think is sometimes uh, the real difficulty for young people who are even aware of some of the opportunities. But again, the issue of access becomes an incredible problem. A lot of the kind of corded platforms you've mentioned need to be accessed online, and there are obvious problems with that. So you said in your introduction that young women have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, and we certainly see that in our own work. The reality in the South African context is the cost of data remains one of the highest barriers uh, for young people in their job search. And it's so much more true now when we're living in a much more virtual and remote work type of world. Getting things zero rated so that they can be data free is a massive priority, but that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And so the reason that other channels like a toll free line or places young people can go in their communities to find youth organizations or even government departments, the National Youth Development Agency, the Department of Employment and Labor. These are organizations that have facilities on the ground in so many communities where a young person ought to be able to go and get the information they need if they can't even make a toll-free call or get online. But the reality is the cost of data, in my view, remains the most significant barrier for young people in their search for work and has been absolutely accelerated um, by the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you get a sense that we're any closer to fixing that issue? Well, we've made some progress. Certainly uh, the lockdown allowed for a number of educational and work-seeking sites to be zero rated, including the SA Youth Platform. I think the question is that has to sustain beyond the kind of um, disaster management regulations and be a part of the kind of core solution as we move out of, ideally, move out of the pandemic in the years ahead. 100%. The Breaking Barriers report has many other versions that preceded this latest one, and it often has some kind of data, research, perhaps trends that should inform how we can intercept these unfavorable trajectories. Now that we're here, do you get a sense that that kind of information is being taken seriously in places where it needs to be? The challenge of youth unemployment is a generational, intractable issue in this country. It's not going to, I mean, that's why I'm saying to you, I think the quarterly labor force survey is frankly a quarterly reminder to make sure we're all paying attention and moving more quickly. I have, I do have optimism that actually the upside of the, the kind of horrific impact of COVID-19 is that it has woken up, I think, a lot of our leaders to the fact that solutions have got to go faster. I mean, young people are waiting for us and those in power to be able to do what they need to do. So the fact people who in the past may not have been as willing to work together or talk to each other, both in the private sector and in the public sector, frankly, are seeing that, that time is of the essence. And so 
to the extent that, that we ought to use every crisis as an opportunity, I do feel confident that at least alignment on the, the needs to tackle this in a more innovative uh, way and to try some new things is landing in a lot of new spaces. Yeah, as we do that, are we even anywhere near quantifying the lost potential of having, according to the broad definition, more than 70% of young people in this country being unemployed? I know it's probably not what a politician would say, but I would say to you that we've got two challenges. We've got to find jobs for the young people whose hands are up and are eager and want right. to work. We also have to keep young people from getting discouraged and opting out of the system almost as importantly. Keeping young people feeling hopeful that there's a place that they can continue to build their skills, make sure that even the things they do as volunteer activities count for their profile so that employers can see that even if I wasn't able to get a job, I've been keeping busy. I've been waking up every day and trying to make a plan. I've been you know, starting a side hustle to earn. I've been getting together with other people in my community to try to tackle a challenge that I see. That is work, and that has to count in this context. And so if we can help young people see that we see them, we see what they're trying to do in the midst of all of this mm. devastation of the pandemic and even what existed before, that for me is as important. And that's why keeping young people in this network, keeping them feeling like there's a place to come that's free, and where, frankly, the leaders of the society are working for them, I think is really an important message alongside the need to grow more jobs um, in the formal and informal economy. How do we close the circle by ensuring that those people who are keeping busy are able to make what they're doing some kind of commodity that can be in our market and essentially get them a livelihood? So I'm not saying we've cracked the full answer, but yeah. I do think that the I do think that the SA Youth Platform, which again is zero rated and free and accessible, is where a lot of partners, including people who support small businesses and youth entrepreneurs, are aggregating what they have on offer. So I might come to the site and not necessarily see a formal sector job. I might see an entrepreneurship program that the National Youth Development Agency is offering. I might see an internship opportunity that the Youth Employment Service is offering. I might see actually content that helps me grow my side hustle so that I can earn more while I continue to search for a formal economy job. I think that the, the power of something like that is that all the partners in the society are willing to kind of find a way to work together, uh, again, in the name of, of the young people. Very quickly, those wanting to plug into the opportunities Harambi specifically offers, where can they access them once again? SAYouth.mobi is the Mobi site. They can call 0800 727272 if they need to talk to a human or are struggling. Um, and so Harambi also is one of the key partners in, in the SA Youth uh, platform itself. Mariana Iskander, thanks very much indeed for your time. Really appreciate you, your Ayanda. insights this morning. She's the CEO of Harambi. They work specifically with uh, young people uh, as well as uh, the kind of opportunities that could be offered for them. An important discussion in the backdrop of the really grim figures, to use the cliche, that we heard yesterday.